Here's a really cool goldenrod. This is Solidago sempervirens. Solidago sempervirens, also known as the seaside goldenrod. The seaside goldenrod. The seaside goldenrod is hands down one of the showiest goldenrods we have in the Chicago region. Sadly, it's not native to here. It's native to the East Coast, uh, predominantly north of Virginia, um, up into Maine, and then. And then it kind of splits out with Mexicana, uh, which some recognize as the same species and just varieties, I think. But Mexicana is going to be heading, heading south into the, uh, into the Gulf in the Atlantic Coastal Plain down south. Uh, anyway, so, uh, so this is cool. This is a great species. Uh, it's kind of followed the highways. It likes salt, so it's going to follow the salted highways uh, throughout the Great Lakes into the Chicago area from... Uh, from, I think it's in Ontario, all the way across into Michigan, into the Chicago region. Sempervirens, just the specific epithet means uh, semper always, and then virens means green, so it's always green, I suppose. <laughs> uh, so let's take a look at what makes sempervirens different than some of our other solid egos. And then looking at the flowers here, it's gonna have over, usually over uh, 12 ray flowers. I mean, look at all these ray flowers here. Um, usually 12 plus ray flowers uh sometimes fewer sometimes more but that's kind of a cutoff solidago uliginosa is going to have less than i don't know six uh or so maybe eight eight i think is the number so it's gonna have less than eight one to eight ray flowers where uh and that's uliginosa mexicana is going to have usually under 12 usually under 12 and again that's a narrower plant um more so, that's not known up here uh, in the Great Lakes region, more of a, a southeastern coastal species. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, so it's going to have uh, more than 12 disc florets, more than 12 ray florets, fleshy leaves. So if you take a look here, the, the leaves, the leaves are going to be, um, they're going to be pretty stalkless, as you can see here. They just, they just kind of attach right to the stem, stalkless there. Uh, they're gonna be toothless, very fleshy, rubbery, like very rubbery, hairless, toothless, um, on a very hairless uh, stem. Uh, there could be a few hairs scattered in the inflorescence and the array, the floral array to be sound cool. Um, anywho's, so, uh, so these leaves are gonna be oftentimes the wider leaves are going to be two and a half, three plus um, centimeters wide sometimes. Um, when you see something like Mexicana, that's going to be much narrower, much smaller. Another plant that this is confused with often is, especially around here, Uliginosa. Uliginosa is a native species uh, to the Chicago region, uh, very variable. Um, it's variable throughout its range, uh, but that's going to have usually long, and I think I may have seen one, so we'll compare it actually. Let's do that. One thing to note, as we go up the stem, you can see that the leaves, although they're getting shorter as it goes up the stem, they're not, they're not to the point where it's, where it's uh, grossly noticeable. Uh, they're usually, the leaves are usually uh, somewhat ascending, so somewhat sticking up. Um, same with the, the inflorescence. So look at the inflorescence here. The inflorescence here. This is, uh, this is terminal. It's like a terminal pyramidal. Uh, so it's like a pyramid. I look at, I think of them kind of like Altissima, the tall goldenrod, where it's a pyramid that you kind of squish together. <laughs> you took the sides and you put your hands and squished it and it turned into this. As we can see over here, let's go down. Look at all that. Basil leaves down here, same, toothless, hairless, much larger, much larger. Look at how cool that looks though. Just a beautiful plant. Oftentimes this stem uh, is a little glaucous and reddish or green it's kind of reddish or green as you can see here looky what we found here so here is i picked it actually here is this one the solidago sempervirens here and this is solidago uliginosa solidago uliginosa um solid and one thing to note right away in this is look how this one to the one that i'm moving up and down that's sempervirens and the one that's straight is uh um, Uliginosa. A couple things to note is look how ascending Sempervirens is, the leaves, and look at how spreading um, uh, Solidago Uliginosa is. Also, Uliginosa is, is oftentimes sub-entire, so it'll have a few teeth, or it's going to be serrate, many more teeth. Pulled a couple leaves off of uh, Uliginosa so you can see the teeth. 
you can kind of see the teeth on the side here and you're not and they don't have that rubbery feel either they're not as rubbery so a lot of the solidagos that have these big flower heads kind of like on sempervirens but have a f more flat topped shape to it are sometimes put in the genus oligoneuron so things like oligoneuron ridelii or oiensis or the like so here this is more pyramidal so it's not an oligoneuron um, but it does have those big flowers so i found some uh, oligoneuron or solidago videlii here and if you look right next to the pyramidal shape so see the shape here it's more flat topped compared to sempervirens which is going to be more pyramidal so anyway so if you're on the roadside uh or in a i don't even uh, it's a long story why there why there's so much here but anyway uh, if you're along a roadside, a highway where that you know it's salted, you oftentimes will see this growing in mass. Again, uh, bigger heads, you know, over 12 disc flowers, over 12 ray flowers, uh, very succulenty, not really succulent, rubbery. Uh, they, I think the keys say fleshy. I think of it kind of rubbery. Leaves um, that they do gradually taper up. So cool. This is Solidago Semper Virens, the seaside goldenrod. Seaside goldenrod.